In filmmaking, focus is a deliberate act. We don't autofocus. We actively choose the point we want to focus on and how much of the scene around that point we want to have in focus. All for effect. So let's take a deeper look at focus. Agent Delario, I think I found the image. I think you have. What is this? Select that. Selecting. You not can use the mouse? Uh, no, no. I mean, you just have to right, you know, right click. Keyboard's always faster, Agent. It's a pointing device that controls the cursor on a two-dimensional graphic user interface. Are you telling me how to do my job, Agent Delario? Okay, that's it, yeah. Okay, magnify. Magnifying? Enhance. Enhancing. Enhance. Enhancing. Enhance! Maximum enhancification. It, it just looks like blurry it pixels. It doesn't look like anything. Yeah, it does, yeah. The edges are really sharp. The, uh, they're I mean, nice contrast. Well, this is all we had to go on. I guess he's going to get away. Lunch? Great idea. Let's go to that the Indian place. Indian place. Buffet. Oh, I love yes. that place. Oh the, my the, God, the... you sit and you eat right away. The, uh... In our previous video on focus, I talked about focus range and how eventually as you focus outward, you hit the hyperfocal distance. That is a point where uh, from your near focus all the way out to infinity, Everything is in focus. We talked about how to find the hyperfocal distance uh, with and without charts, but I was still curious why there were different charts for the different size sensors, uh, full frame and crop frame. If you look at the hyperfocal distance formula, and don't worry, it's not complicated, you'll see three values. One is for the focal length of your lens, like a 50 millimeter or 35 millimeter lens. The other is for the f-stop you're shooting at, like an f8 or an f5.6. And a value called circle of confusion, which specifies what acceptable sharpness is. And it's usually given as a diameter in millimeters. Basically, the limit of focus where anything past that becomes blurry to the eye. But I don't see the size of the sensors anywhere in that formula. So why are there different focus charts for full frame and crop frame cameras? I gots to know. Well, when I was working on that video, I noticed at the bottom of the chart, DOF Master gave me a circle of confusion number that I hadn't seen before. It was 0 0.019 millimeters. And that was for a crop frame Canon camera, the 7D. If I looked at other Canon crop frame sensors that were the same APS-C sensors, they always had 0 0.019 millimeters. So I looked up a full frame camera, the Canon 5D, and that circle of confusion value jumped up to 0 0.030 millimeters. Why the change? Well, it ends up the sensor size does matter and it's covered in that value of circle of confusion. When a point is in focus, it's well, a point. When it's not, it enlarges into a circle and you get a blur. In the world of optics, they define circle of confusion as the largest blur spot that will still be perceived by the human eye as a point. In other words, it's still in focus. So the more out of focus an area of your subject is, the bigger the circles become. That can actually be desirable at times when you want an out of focus effect in the background like our shots with James and Courtney. Even larger circles get their own term, bokeh. It's based on the Japanese word bokeh, which means blur. 
Okay, great. So why though the different circle of confusion values for those different sensors? Well, if you look at say the print world, they back in the day had 35 millimeter film, but they also had larger formats that were used for higher resolution uses like a full page photo, a poster, a billboard, or that folded center section that I think was called a centerfold. In the film world, we also had 35 millimeter film, but we also had VistaVision and IMAX, which were 75 millimeter. And that meant that more resolution meant you could blow that image up or use it for special effects where you needed that higher resolution. So you either needed it for special effects or you used it to give more detail in a larger screen experience for the viewing public. Well, it's the same with digital sensors. Yeah, we've gotten more megapixels and better quality sensors, but in the end, we're still focusing an image from the back of the lens onto a small area. Today, it's a crop frame sensor that's the smaller of the two. Back in the day, it was 16 millimeter, right, to 35. So a more restrictive circle of confusion was needed you're technically blowing up the image from that smaller sensor up to the same viewing size as the full frame. On DOF Master, they actually have a page with their table of circle of confusion values for all the different, not just video, but also still uh, cameras. And there's quite a few of them. You'll see that even the point and shoot cameras which are small, they have super restrictive circle of confusion numbers. So that table is where they pull the numbers for their various charts. Now, don't sweat this technical stuff too much. The purpose of these charts aren't to tell you the right way to focus. They're meant to assist you ahead of time to figure out, okay, well, what is the optimal f-stop I wanna shoot at to have the focus range that I want? Or to let you know ahead of time that you might be running into some issues because maybe you're shooting very close for a tabletop or a night shoot with a very uh, a wide f-stop. In the end, focus is subjective and you decide what works or doesn't work for your shot. It helps guide the eye and can set a mood or an effect. The key is to know how to get what you want and when. So our recommendation is to always take a test shot and check it on a larger monitor before you shoot that setup. Here uh, is a 23 inch monitor and it's a, you know, kind of an average size you might expect a viewer to be watching a YouTube show on. Another tip when filming people, which um, when do we do that in this business? All the time. It's best to focus on the eye. Uh, it's what your eye is drawn to as a viewer, but also what it means is that your near and far focus are on either side of that eye, and that means you get the face in focus, which is what you want. Now, professional ACs, assistant cameramen, don't use a metal tape measure to check uh, the distance like we did on our last video. Not good. They use uh, soft tape measures like this. This is pretty old antique, I'm afraid it's gonna break, um, to measure that out. Uh, it has a loop on the end that they hang on uh, a little nubbin, just like this one here on the C100. But that works best with cine lenses with their more detailed focus rings. They go along with their extremely detailed pricing. A lot of numbers, but God, they're beautiful. I want one of those. Zooming into a point to focus is a good idea. It gives you a shallower depth of field than when you're zoomed out. And so therefore, you can get a little more accurate focus. But if you're filming yourself, how do you do that? Well, I use a grip stand that I place near where my eye would be. Uh, you could use a mic if you have one on a stand or any other object to stand in for you. But you may notice when zoomed in that you still have a range in which your focus point is still in focus. I find it best to set my focus in the middle of that range. But if I'm focusing down on a flat surface, a small area, I might set it at the back of that focus range so that I can see other things like my hands coming into the frame. Note, when I say zoom in, I mean actually zooming in using a zoom lens, not using magnify, 
which simulates zooming by magnifying an area of your image. But it's still useful, just make sure you're focusing on the middle of that focus range. You can do that by checking back and forth or actually looking at your points on your focus ring. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out pullmyfocus.tv for our companion articles uh, to our videos. <laughs>